Holy Wire Mod. Holy Wire Mod here, and this is tutorial 17C in the Lewis series, where we're going to be taking a look at adding a round timer to the currently existing deathmatch system that we're working on. So let us then start by acknowledging that we're going to have to enable communication between the server and the client for us to have a timer on the client side. And to do this, we need to utilize the network strings. So we're going to be adding a network string, and we will be adding round timer. And likewise, we're going to also add one, which is going to be for a Boolean value for round active. And that's going to allow the client to know that the round is indeed active. OK, so moving on to round system at Lua, we're going to need to start with a function, which is going to be custom, and used to communicate the time between the, si uh, the client and the server. And we're going to call this update timer. And we're going to say net start and put round timer and then we're going to put broadcast because we're sending to all clients not just one and now we are going to write an integer which is going to be time with 10 bits so that's going to be everything for update timer now looking at round start and incorporating this new mechanic of time we should first define it here so locally as time, and that's going to initially be set to 5. And this is for a pre-round value. That's to say that our pre-round timer is going to start at 5 seconds, and it's going to count down slowly to 0. And if all the other conditions are met, such as there being enough players and the player count being greater than 1, then the round is actually going to start. Otherwise, it's just going to reset until we have enough players. So first, we need to update the timer, and we'll do that with time. And now we're going to say timer create so we'll say round it could be anything it doesn't have to be round and we'll have one which is going to be our starting point and we're going to have time and then we're going to say this function is what's getting executed when everything is said and done so we're going to say time is time minus one so we're counting down and now we are going to take this and take all this and put this here we'll just tab that over so the only thing we're going to be changing, all this is the same. We're just checking how many players are alive, if you don't remember, and then doing our win conditions. However, we're going to be changing this, or this round start condition, not win condition, and say that time is going to be less than or equal to zero. When it is less than or equal to zero, and we have enough players and all this stuff, then the round's going to start. But we also need to communicate that for the client if we want to use this information for whatever reason or hood. To do that, we say net start round start I mean round active not round start and we're going to go to broadcast because we want everybody to know this and we're going to write bool which is going to be true okay so now we need an else if here and that else if is going to get the number of players into server so we're going to be doing a table count of the table player get all and we're going to check if that's less than a value of 2 and if it is less than a value of 2 then we're going to update the timer to 5 and then return so we're doing that because there's not enough players on the server and we need more time for players to get on the server so that's what we're going to be doing all right so that's just going to reset it and permit them more time so we're going to then update the timer otherwise to whatever time is all right so that's almost everything here we have one more thing which we need to actually put an if statement and that's going to be checking if time is less than or equal to zero and the instance that there weren't enough players so we're going to say or there were enough players rather than not there were enough players and then we're going to say the round has actually started, then we're going to do a round end check just as a fail safe. And now that's going to be everything for round start. So let's then look into round end check to see if the round is actually ended. Now we're going to have a timer and that's going to be set to a value of 31. It's not 30 because the round's intended to have 30 seconds for each round. It's 31 because it will, if 30, start the timer at 29 
instead of 30. So we need to put it 31 if we wanted to start it at 30. Okay, and now we're going to count down from a value of time instead of the other way. And then we're going to have to decrease time. So time is equal to time minus one. And then we're going to update the timer with time. And we're going to make a check or conditional check saying if the time is less than or equal to zero and none of these conditions have been met yet like there are no the players still alive on both teams then we're going to end the round now remember we have end round with the parameter of who won the round so we're going to say end round and we're going to say no one won the round and that's just going to disregard all this because nothing will happen because there's still players alive. So remember, because this is checking how many red players alive, how many blue players alive, and we're printing it here. Now, other than that, we just need to take a look at end round. So end round is going to be the same for here, here, so here, except we have one issue. And that is because we have check delay counting down with the variable time. Time is also used in round start. So if this is counting down time and this is counting down time, it's going to start causing issues. So we need to stop the timer check delay to prevent that when the round ends. So to do that, we'll say timer remove and we'll put check delay. All right, so lastly, last thing we want to do is we're going to change up um, this in this aspect that we're going to be broadcasting the round active status to the client. That's the last thing. So round active. And again, we do this just by doing a net message and we're going to be broadcasting to everybody. So you should be really good at net messages after this tutorial, right? Right. All right. So we're going to write a Boolean and we're going to be writing false to correspond with the server side false, which is set right here. Okay, so that's going to be everything for server side. Now, client side, we're going to have to draw everything to the panel. So yes, we can make another file and do it like we did scoreboard, but we're not. We're going to be using this font too as well to kind of save some time. Remember, you can create another font if you would like so anyway let's create the panel so this should be a refresher for those who have seen the panel tutorial if not I highly recommend you check that out before looking at this but and it's it's going to be a function right here of self and this is going to be for defining the components for those who forget so we're going to have self body right and that's going to be a panel which we're going to put behind the timer so we're going to say self, so we're going to put body, we need a couple of those, and we're going to say dock, we're going to dock it to the top. And then here we're going to set the height, and we're going to do 40 pixels. And lastly, we're going to be painting it so it looks nice. So here we're going to do self body, and we're going to do paint with a width and height of the panel. So we're going to be doing surface and we're going to set draw color and we're going to be setting that to a value of 150 to 55, 150, it can be whatever you want. But then we're also going to be, I don't know why I did this, put draw rounded box, just like this. And we're going to put 16, negative 20. And this is going to be the parameters of the negative box, the top, bottom, left, and right, if you recall. We're going to have width and height, or width divided by 2. We're going to have height. And then we're going to set the color to 75, 75, 75 with an alpha of 150. All right, so that should be everything for the body. Now we just need to set the actual text for the timer. And to do that, we're going to be setting footer. I mean, not footer, timer. 
too much uh, HTML, all this footer stuff. So now we got self, and then we're going to do body, which is going to be the parent. And we're going to add, and we're going to be using a D label, if you recall. That's how you set text on the HUD. And we're going to put timer and set font. Now we're going to be using my font from above. And we're also going to need a couple of these. So do that. We're going to set the text color to 255, 255, 255, alpha 255. So that's just white. <coughs> and also recall you have to actually put the color here as well. Don't want to forget that. All right, so now we're going to dock this to the left. And then we're going to set the content alignment. And this is going to center it to 5. And that's corresponding to numpad 5 being exact center. OK, so that's in it. Now the other two that we have to do, which perform layout and think, are not as long as in it as they never are. So we're going to say function self, and then we will then say that self, the size of self, is going to be 200, 100. And the position of self is going to be 0, 0, so top left-hand corner. All right, and lastly, we need to think. So we're going to have function of self, of course, with a width and a height. And in this think, we're going to be receiving the net message round timer. And when we do that, we're going to trigger this function with the parameters. Well, you don't really need these parameters, but it's good to know that you can still call on them, which is length and player, or length of the message and the player. And we're going to say that time is equal to read int, which we recall is 10 bits. And it's important that this is the same as the sending side of 10 as well. OK, so then we're going to say, OK, so if the time wasn't valid, if it's equal to nil, then we're going to reset the timer to our starting value for the pre-round, which is five seconds. Elsewise, we'll be setting this timer to a value of time, whatever time may be. All right, so that's going to be everything for the think and setting up the panel itself. Now, next, we're going to have to actually register it. So we'll say VGUI register table so table or timer not table timer panel is going to be the one that we're registering and remember we have to put editable panel right here and also we are going to after all this we're going to initially define round active as false now this is for if you need round active on your client side for whatever reason we don't really need to consider it for this tutorial, but it, it's helpful to know this just in case. So what we do is round or net receive, and then we're going to receive the net message round active. And you can have function of the length of the message and all this stuff, but we don't really have the length with Boolean that we have to really worry about. So it doesn't really matter if we include it or not. So now we have round active, which was just defined above, is equal to read bool. And now we can incorporate that in our HUD if need be. OK, so lastly, what we want to do is we want to actually create this panel that we just registered. So to do that, we're going to say if is valid or not, not alive, but valid. And then we're going to say the name of our panel, which is going to be created from a table. So we're going to say my panel, 
or timer panel. How about that? That'd be easier, more precise. We'll call it timer panel. And then we'll say then timer panel is going to be equal to V2I create, or signed rather, V2I create from table and Oops, got to put the GUI. It's a new library, VUIG. Anyway, we're going to be creating timer panel, just like this. And also, now, if it is valid, and it does actually exist, then we're just going to say timer panel, and we're going to show it. All right, so... Let's go hop in game and see how this goes. All right, so we are now in game and there's some slight errors and that's mainly because um, this right here, this end, I forgot to get rid of this when turning this into an if and else if. So we're going to get rid of this end, that'll take care of that. And also additionally, um, I forgot that since time is initialized right here in 31 seconds and we have a round in check uh, every time the player dies that would call the round in check so actually we can do we can actually remove this and have no consequence now that we're moving to a timer based system because uh, when it's called once it's checking every second thanks to this timer all right so let's go inside of the game and I'll reconnect real quick all right, so reconnected, and here the timer is five in the top left corner. Now I'm going to bring up the console, and let's add a bot. So now the countdown timer is going down again before it gets to zero. Let's add another bot. Oh, never mind. Got to do it next round. So as you notice, the countdown timer started from 30 instead of 31, and recall there is issue because I said. Um, by putting it to 30, it would start it at 29. So it's whatever time you want to start, minus one. Just keep that in mind. So, and it's another reason I didn't put it to 60 seconds or some ridiculous because that'd make you guys wait. That'd be mean. So now it is at six seconds. No one has died. Everything's looking good in council. And now the round's going to end and it says no one won the round. So that's good. That works out. So now the timer's at three. Let's reset it with a player joining. Now it's at five. And this gives us a chance for the players to um, join the server. So now we have a round active, and this time we're going to kill the other team to end the round. So now it says red won the round, and everything's reset it accordingly, and it looks good. All right, so that's going to conclude everything with uh, this timer. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys in the next video.